The following is presented by the Pinellas County Extension. Hi, I'm Teresa Bederick and welcome to your Florida Vegetable Garden. Today we're going to talk about um, plant selection and layout. So in Florida we have different growing seasons and some of you from up north might be familiar with. Our main growing season for vegetables goes from September through May. And we have cool season vegetables and warm season vegetables, just like anyone else. Our cool season vegetables prefer cooler temperatures. Some of them actually require cool temperatures to grow. And then the warm season vegetables, of course, require warmer temperatures to grow. Now, because we have such a long growing season, starting around September, we can start off with some of our warm season vegetables. And as we move into the cooler temperatures in winter, move to cool season, and then again, as we approach the spring and the warmer temperatures, move back into the warm season vegetables. Our summers here, like some places up north, we don't have as many options for um, growing vegetables in the garden. We can grow some things like sweet potatoes, okra, black-eyed peas, but many people choose to grow uh, cover crops that might be replenishing the soil with nutrients and just preventing weeds in order to keep out of the garden for themselves and because the hot temperatures aren't really good for some of our crops. Now, some of the certain varieties that you can find um, for cool season vegetables, it might include things like beets, broccoli, carrots, peas, and then the warm season vegetables include things like green beans, sweet corn, peppers, tomatoes, and things like that. For lots of information, including all of the suggested varieties for Florida, the different cool season and warm season, planting dates, harvest dates, all that information can be found on our Florida Vegetable Gardening Guide on the University of Florida IFAS website. And this will give you lots of information that you need to know to plan out your garden. So to select what you want in your garden, the most important thing to do is to plant what you and your family like. Because if you are really successful and you grow a whole bunch of something, you want to make sure it's something you're going to eat or want to preserve, um, other than giving it to your neighbor when you've grown too much of it. And then you also want to plant crops that are going to mature along your timeline. And that's where that vegetable gardening guide comes in really handy. Because different crops have different maturity dates, and so lengths of time to maturity will vary. And you want to pick stuff that's going to work for your schedule. If you know you're going to leave town and, and be on vacation when something matures, then that might not be the right crop for you to plant. This is especially important if you're planting in a school garden and you're working with uh, the kids on some projects. You want to make sure you pick plants that are going to harvest within that school schedule. And again, you can refer to the Vegetable Gardening Guide for those dates. When you go to lay out the garden, you want to make sure that you plan ahead on paper. Now, this is really good for a variety of reasons. Uh, for organizational purposes, for um, rotating our crops, which is good to prevent pests and disease, so you know what you planted last year. You can't rotate one crop around the garden if you don't remember where it was before. So make sure you plan out on, on paper. It's also nice because if you mark your plants and the markers get moved, you still remember what you've got growing there. Some other ways to plan out is to also make sure you're considering sun exposure. You don't want your taller plants to shade your shorter plants. So you want to make sure that your taller plants are to the north end of the garden to avoid that. Similarly, if you have rows, you might want to angle the rows north and south. That helps for even sun distribution and it'll lessen the chance of having some plants shading other shorter plants. Another thing that you might want to consider is to have crops with more than one season, like strawberries that require more than one season or perennial herbs that will be in place for year after year. You might want to group those together so that they're away from your annual plants that will change season to season to avoid disturbing the plants that will stay in place. Another thing that you want to remember if growing sweet corn is that sweet corn needs to be planted in blocks, meaning one row of sweet corn isn't going to be enough. You need to have several rows of sweet corn to ensure that they have good pollination. Without good pollination, you won't have a lot of kernels in your corn and it wouldn't be any fun at all. So make sure you keep that in mind for sweet corn. Another thing to consider is to allow for crop rotation in your garden. That simply means that you plant your plants that are in similar families together so that you can move them from one section to another. There are certain pests and diseases that target one particular plant family and by moving them from one section of the garden to the next, from one season to the next, you can help confound those pests sometimes and reduce your pest problem. Some examples that include like tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants are all in one plant family. So you would move those around and put something else there. The families are all listed in that vegetable gardening guide, so that takes all the guesswork out of it for you. But that's another good reason to plan things out on paper so that you know where one family was and you can avoid that in coming seasons. Another thing to consider when laying out your garden is companion plantings. And these are especially important if you have a very small garden, as a lot of us do. 
that you can maximize the, the crops that you get from your garden. A few examples of those could include things like planting carrots and radishes together in the same section. Carrots take a very long time to harvest, but radishes are very quick. They only take about a month before they're ready. So you could be harvesting the radishes and that will leave the carrots plenty of space to grow. So in one spot you can grow carrots and radishes and save a lot of space. There are other examples. A popular one is called the Three Sisters where you grow corn, beans, and squash all together. As the corn grows tall, the beans climb up the corn as a trellis and the squash grows below and helps suppress weeds by shading out some of the weeds. That's a very popular one. You can also grow lettuce and corn in a similar fashion. Uh, as the corn grows tall later in the season, it actually helps shade the lettuce which doesn't like the hot temperatures and the direct sun and can extend the period of time in which you can grow that corn. So those are a couple ways to save some space. Uh, and finally, I wanted to mention that there's a, a technique called succession planting that can also help space out your garden and help you decide how to lay it out. And that's where you plant not everything all at once. If you did that, everything would be ready for harvest all at once. You'd have an abundance of vegetables, and when all that was done, you'd have nothing. So a succession garden just means that you plant things in intervals, so you space them out. You plant a little bit of one crop now, and three or four weeks later, plant a little bit more of that crop and a little bit more, keeping in mind the season so that you don't get into too cold or too hot for that particular crop. That's another great way to save some space in your garden. Thank you for joining me. This is Teresa Bederick and this is your Florida Vegetable Garden. For more information on this and many more topics, visit www.pinellascountyextension.org.